Okay, in this demonstration now, we're gonna show the basic workings of a heat engine. And so this is an actual experiment that we do in our class, but here we're not gonna get into the real numbers and stuff, we're just gonna show so you can understand. So we're gonna have, um, you can see our equipment that we have set up here. We have a, a can of air here, and the air is enclosed, and that is connected to this chamber here with a piston and that piston is connected to this plate and it comes over, you can see here, it comes over a pulley and the, the weight here, which is about 30 grams, counterbalances the weight of the, the piston here so that right now it's not moving. Then we have two um, reservoirs and we have a cold water reservoir in here and we have a temperature probe that's monitoring the temperature of that. And we have a hot water reservoir. So the essential workings of a heat engine is that you have a hot water reservoir where heat comes in from and it enables a certain engine to do work. And then the heat is dumped into the cold water reservoir. And then during that process, you do the heat engine does some kind of work. Either it could be a car or any kind of other motor that runs. Um, so now, here is the process that we're going to do. We're going to start out this heat engine process by taking a weight and we're going to take this weight and put it on the piston. When we put the weight on the piston, the volume of the, it's, uh, the, volume of the piston is going to go down. This one is going to go down. And so this is going to be more or less isothermally. The pressure is going to increase. The volume is going to decrease. Okay. Then I'm going to uh, take the, the can and put it in the hot water. When I put it in the hot water, the, gas is, the heat should come in from the hot water. The gas should expand, doing work against the piston. Now it should go up uh, more or less isobarically, the constant pressure. Then I'm going to take the weight off. When I take the weight off, the gas should expand even more. Okay. And then I'm gonna put the can back in the cold water. So now the full cycle will go. I'm gonna put the weight on and I'm gonna turn this on. Let's press start here. And you can see that the temperature of the hot reservoir is 82 Celsius and the temperature of a cold reservoir is 0.4. This is perfect because we have enough of a difference of temperatures so that we can actually run an engine through that. So now watch what happens when I put, I'm gonna put a 200 gram weight here on top of the piston. And now what ha watch what happens to the graph. The volume decreases, the pressure goes up. Okay, now I'm gonna take the can, put it in the hot reservoir. The pressure is staying more or less constant, but heat is coming in. Therefore, the volume of the cylinder, you can see here the volume of the cylinder, has increased. The gas has done work against the piston. Okay? So now, I'm gonna take that, take the weight off. Okay? As I took the weight off, the volume should increase some more. So you can see the volume uh, increased, the pressure decreased. You see? So that's uh, isothermal. So now, uh, now I'm gonna take this and put it back in the cold reservoir keep it there, and I have completed the cycle. And so now I could go back to the atmosphere. If I go back there, and I could repeat this again, but it's never gonna perfectly repeat here, because now I could go back, put the weight there, and you could go through the same thing, put it in the hot reservoir, okay? You could see literally the thing rising as I put it in the hot reservoir, you see, it's rising. Then take this off, take it, put it back in the cold reservoir, and the cycle repeats. So you can see that here the basic workings of the heat engine of the car, of any other kind of heat engine. So the, the process is looking like this. The, the volume, this is a, called a PV diagram. 
the volume initial starts here, the pressure starts here. More or less isothermally, the volume, uh, the volume is dropping, the pressure is increasing. Here, PV is a constant. As the volume is dropping, the pressure is increasing. So that's when I put the weight there and, it, and the weight is pressing down on it. The volume is dropping, pressure of the gas is increasing. Then I put it in the hot reservoir. More or less, it hovers around isobarically, so pressure is constant. This is called isobaric, okay? And now, after that, this one uh, here was called isothermal. And then over there, I put the weight off, it goes back, okay? And then over here, it goes back this way. So during this stage, heat comes into, okay? During this stage, uh, heat uh, also comes into the gas, Q into gas. So you have heat coming from the hot reservoir, and when I am uh, putting the weight on, heat is also coming into it. So you have two sources of heat, and then as I take the weight off, the heat is being dumped out, Q out, and then over here, Q out. You're dumping the heat back out to the cold reservoir down here, okay? So if I wanted to determine the efficiency of this heat engine, the ideal efficiency is one minus T uh, cold over T hot, okay? So, uh, my T cold was around zero Celsius, so which would be 273. My T hot was about 80 Celsius, which is 353. So my ideal efficiency of this heat engine It's about 22.6%. It's about 22.6% efficient. That's the best efficiency that this heat engine can have. Okay, which is sort of like a car's efficiency, 10 to 20% or so. But it's not going to be as efficient as that. In the real world, you're going to have even less efficiency than the ideal. And so, to find the actual efficiency, we would have to calculate uh, how much work the gas did on the piston, how much heat came in, and we would have to do a lot of calculations based on that, because the, the real efficiency would, would be how much work the gas did, work out by gas, divided by heat into gas. So we would have to do certain calculations. How much heat came into the gas during the isobaric stage? How much heat came into the gas during the isothermal stage going up. We would have to add all of that heat. We would have to compute how much work the gas did, find the ratio. And we're gonna see that the, the actual efficiency is gonna be less than the ideal. So you can see here with this lab and demonstration how this could be an ideal way of studying the efficiency of heat engines and the basic underworkings of how a heat engine works. So this is a very good topic in thermodynamics. Thank you.